Which you guys, today we're taking a look at how to dual boot Windows and Zorin OS on separate drives. Now, Windows 10 support has ended on October 14th, 2025. If you have an old legacy style computer that's not eligible to upgrade to Windows 11, then dual booting with Zorin OS might be the way forward for you because it means you can keep your old computer and use something like Zorin OS as your daily driver and use Windows as your gaming system or maybe for your proprietary software that doesn't work on Zorin OS. So we're going to download Zorin OS 18 Core Edition. It's a free edition, which means you're going to receive security updates and support for that operating system for a few more years. So what we're going to do is download the uh, USB image of software. This is going to create our bootable USB flash drive with Zorin OS 18 on it. So I'm going to download this. You can use whatever you like, whether you want to use Rufus or any of those other software you can do. This is a very simple program which will allow us to create our bootable USB flash drive. So I'm going to open the software up and I'm going to select my Zorin OS 18 Core Edition ISO file. And all I need to do is select my USB flash drive right here, which is this one right here. And all I need to do here is click on the right button and it will write that image to that USB flash drive. And then I can boot to that USB flash drive and then install it onto the second hard drive that I have in this computer. When you're dual booting, it's always advisable to use separate drives for Windows and also for Linux. That way you can be assured that you're not going to run into any issues and it's going to be easier to fix your issues with separate drives. So here we are on Windows 10. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to update and security and you'll see that it says your version of Windows has reached end of support. That means that you're not going to receive any more support for this operating system. You can use the ESU to get one more year of support for Windows 10. But once that's ended, that will be the end of Windows 10. Unless you're using an IoT LTSE version or LTSE versions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to dual boot and have uh, Zorin OS 18 on one drive and Windows 10 on the other. So let's go to the start button, right click and go to disk management. You'll see it pop up here. This is the drive that I have installed here. So I'm going to use MBR because we're running this on a legacy system. And here you can see that I have disk zero and disk one. Disk one is where Linux is going to be and disk zero is going to be our Windows 10 system. Now, of course, we're not going to be touching disk zero. We're just going to be installing Linux onto our disk one. So let me just quickly sort this out here. And we're going to use two separate hard drives or SSDs for dual boot setup. Windows on one and Linux on the other. It's highly preferred because it's safer and more reliable and prevents OS installations interfering with each other's bootloaders, making maintenance and troubleshooting much easier and reducing the risk of data loss, especially for beginners. It allows each OS to have its own dedicated disk and EFI partition, simplifying installations and protecting data if one drive fails. Okay, so let's uh, quickly check here. So unallocated space is for Zorin OS 18 and disk zero is on its own drive and that is for our Windows 10 operating system. So let's type system information into the search box on Windows 10 and this will tell us what BIOS mode we are running on this system. This is important because you really want to use uh, say legacy for both of the operating systems or UEFI for both. So it's not recommended to mix legacy BIOS and UEFI for dual booting. Both operating systems must install and boot into the same mode, either both UEFI or both legacy for them to see and boot properly. So what we're going to do now is boot up to our USB flash drive with Zorin OS 18 on it so we can install it onto our second drive. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down the computer. And what we're going to do is then boot up to our BIOS so we can change our boot order. Now, I'm on a virtual machine here, but yours might look something different to this, but you need to change the boot order to boot to your USB flash drive first. And that's what we're going to do. Once you've done that, you can push F10 to save changes, and you should see something looking like this. 
Now, if you've got a modern NVIDIA drivers, which we don't have here, so we're going to be using the uh, try and install Zorin OS. We're using the top option. But if you have a modern day system, that's for another video. Uh, that will be that option down there. But we're going to use the top option because we're using a legacy based system. And we're going to boot up and you should see something looking like this on the screen. So we'll let this fully load up so we can then choose to install Zorin OS 18 core onto this drive. So you should see something looking like this once we get to this, this desktop here. And we should see two options available to us. One is try Zorin OS and the other one is install Zorin OS. We're going to be installing Zorin OS. So choose your language and click on install Zorin OS. From here, we're going to choose English UK for ourselves. You can choose whatever you want. We're going to leave the top two check marked and click continue. This will then start the installation process. Now, what we need to do is wait till we get to the installation type and we can then choose which option suits us. Install Zorin OS alongside Windows 10. Now this can be a bit misleading and I fell for this myself. This is for single drives only. And if you have a single drive installation with Windows and Linux together, that will be the option you choose, which is not recommended. Erase disk and install Zorin OS. This is another option you can choose. And right here, you've got some advanced features here. I'm going to click cancel here. If we click continue, you'll see it says select your drive. We can then choose this drive right here. And from here, we could then click install now and it will install Zorin OS onto that drive. This one is the Windows drive. It says free partitions will be deleted. We obviously don't want to do that. The next option is something else. This is for more advanced users and you can then choose where you want to uh, install your actual Zorin OS. This partition right here is the partition that you would obviously install it on on this system because that is the drive that would be used for Zorin OS. The one it's on now is for Windows. This is the one right here ending in 0N2. So that would be the one right here, which is 64 gigabytes in size. So you would then choose the free space and you would then obviously click the plus sign and this will allow you to set it up. Let me just quickly show you here what you would be doing if you wanted to use this. You'd click the plus. This will open up the create partition. From here, you can choose either primary or log logical. And then from here, you would choose ext4 and we would see the settings as it is right here and then choose the forward slash right here. Click OK and it it installed it into that location. You would then select the full drive to install Windows. We're not going to be using this method because this one is for another video. But what we're going to do is go back and we're going to choose Erase Disk and Install Zone OS. Click Continue. And from here, we're going to choose that drive where we wanted to install it. In this case, it's our secondary drive, this one here. We can now click Install Now and it will go ahead and install this onto our 64 gig drive. You can see right here, it's telling us, is everything okay? We're gonna click continue. And now you just go through the usual setup process. Choose your location, give it a username and a password, and you should be pretty much good to go. Once we get past this stage, I will speed the process up. So you're not sitting here watching the whole installation process because it is pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to click continue at this stage and I will speed it up. Now the installation part is just going to go and install and that's all you need to do here. It will say installation complete, restart now. So what I'm going to do is click restart now and the system's going to shut down. It's going to ask you to remove the USB flash drive, press enter and now it's going to boot up. So what we're going to do here is going to boot up to our Windows based system first, like so. And of course, it's missed the grub menu. And we're going to set this up right now. I'm going to show you how easy to set this up inside Windows 10. From here, we've got disk management. This is our drives. You can see disk zero is our Windows drive and disk one is our Zorin OS or Linux distribution that we've installed onto that drive. Now to get the menu to choose whether you want to boot into Zorin OS 18 
or Windows 10. I'm going to show you how we can quickly set this up. We're going to use Easy VCD. We're going to download this. It's a free tool that you can download for non-commercial use for home users. You would register and download it like I've got here. I've already downloaded it and got it installed on the system and I'll quickly show you how we can set it up. So we're going to click on this and open the program up. So here we have our setup for Easy BCD. If we click on add new entry, what we're going to do here is click on this and you'll see there is a Windows here and there's also Linux BSD. The type of uh, Grub legacy, we want to go to Grub2. We're going to give it a name and we can call this whatever Linux distribution you're using. I'm going to be using Zorin OS 18. So I'm going to type in Zorin OS like so. And for the drive, we need to select that drive where we've got Zorin OS installed. In this case, it's on drive one, partition one. So let me go ahead and select that. But you can see there's other partitions. Just make sure you select the drive, which is where Linux is installed. Once you're done, you can click on the green plus sign next to it. And this will save that entry. And you'll see it say saved on the bottom left hand side when I click on it like so. That's now done. And all we need to do now is we can edit the boot menu and now you'll see two entries. We've got Windows 10 as default, yes. And we've got Zorin OS. I can change this if I want to. I can make Zorin OS my default operating system by check marking it like this. And that means it will boot into Zorin OS every single time first. Or I can leave it as Windows 10. I'm going to leave it as Windows 10 here. We can use the Metro bootloader and we can now save these settings and it should say bootloader settings saved on the bottom left hand side. Now when I reboot the system we should get the boot Metro uh, system where we'll get the option to boot into uh, Zorin OS or Windows 10 and whatever you named it it will be shown up on the menu system. So let's reboot the system you will see Windows because I had that as my default and there we have choose an operating system. Zorin OS or Windows 10. So if I choose Zorin OS, it's going to boot to Zorin OS. There you go. That's simple. So now we're going to boot up, put in our uh, password for our Zorin OS operating system. I'm going to push enter and that should now boot up very quickly like so. And there we go. We've got the benefits of Zorin OS. Now what I can do here is we can quickly uh, open up the terminal here and do some updates and uh, basically make sure the system is fully updated and up and running properly. That's what's sort of advisable. And it's pretty straightforward. You can go into terminal here and it's advisable to get used to Zorin OS. It's very simple and easy to use this operating system, uh, but you don't need to use uh, the terminal, uh, but it's always handy uh, to learn some basic commands and sudo apt update is a very simple and easy to command to get used to. And also sudo apt Upgrade is also another one that you can also get used to. And there's a bunch of other ones that you might need to use in the future. So there's a bunch of commands that I would advise you learn, and this will get you familiar with uh, the Linux operating system. So we're just going to let this update and upgrade the system. And once that's done, I'll reboot the system and we can boot back into Windows 10. So if you want to use Windows 10 as your uh, gaming system, and continue to use it or you want to uh, use Windows 10 with proprietary software on it maybe Adobe Suite or maybe you've got Office on there or maybe you've got some other proprietary software that doesn't work on Linux then you can boot into Windows 10 still. Once support ends for Windows 10 and the ESU has ended you can use Zero Patch to continue to patch the operating system and use Windows 10 for a number of years afterwards, maybe five years or more. And if you're using IoT LTSE versions or LTSE versions, they will have 2027 for LTSE and IoT LTSE 2032 support. And Linux will become your main daily driver if you want it to be. And you can use it on a daily basis for all of your regular work that you like to do, like watching YouTube videos, uh, you know, surfing the web, emails and stuff like that. They've even got office suites on here that you can use like LibreOffice, 
and things like that as well. So get used to Linux and you'll still have the comfort of Windows 10 for all your games and all your other uh, software needs that don't work on Zorin OS or any other Linux distro. So you've got the best of both worlds, basically. And because you've got Windows on one drive and Linux on another drive, you shouldn't have that many problems. Whereas if you're using dual boot on one drive uh, only and you're basically using one drive for Windows and Linux, this is when you can end up with major problems and end up losing data and causing yourself major issues. So this is probably the safest and easiest way to set up Windows and Linux on a dual boot. Now, if you've already made the transition to Linux already and you've chosen your distro and you've now installed it and you don't have Windows anymore, then good for you. That's up to you whether you do that. But this is for people that still want to keep one foot in Windows because they have proprietary software that only works in Windows and they have those games that don't work on Linux and they want to continue to play them uh, on Windows. So this is the best of both worlds, in my opinion. And it's always best to use two drives. Now, if you don't have two drives, don't be tempted to dual boot with one drive because you are going to run into issues down the line. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. Have a lovely weekend. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three support, I really do appreciate it. And I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.